Every week at our worship and at other community gatherings, we share in this territorial acknowledgement and recognize our blessings of being able to live, work, and serve on this sacred land. Please take time to read this acknowledgement regularly and share it with people in our community. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Cuthbert's today as we gather to celebrate this worship together. And now let us hear some announcements about what's happening in our parish community. Please join us for our virtual Lenten book study. We will be looking at a book written by Krista Tippett. It's entitled Becoming Wise, an inquiry into the mystery and art of living. I think you're gonna find this book to be not only interesting and inspiring, but you'll also find our very lively discussions worthwhile. We will be meeting virtually on Wednesdays in Lent, that's six Wednesdays in a row, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. You'll be able to do this from the comfort of your own home, if you are interested in participating, please contact Lori in the office and she will send you the Zoom link so you can join us. You don't have to come every week, so if you think you can come and just enjoy parts of it, please do. And if you need help getting a copy of the book, either the ebook or the printed book, please contact us and we will help you out. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesdays in Lent. We have a big celebration coming up on March the 19th. That is the day we celebrate our patron saint, St. Cuthbert. And on that day in March, March 19th, we will be joined by our Bishop, Susan Bell. And we will be blessed by her presence as she preaches and celebrates the Eucharist and then joins us for a wonderful lunch after the service. So please join us. I think you're gonna find this service to be incredibly special. All of us will be joining together, our 8 a.m., 10 a.m. and bilingual service congregations. So please join us and please stay for lunch and please invite people you know so that they can join with us too. As many of you know, there are many people in our community who are suffering. They're unable to get enough food to eat. And through our work together, we can help to alleviate that food insecurity for them. If you're able at all, please drop off food at the church. You can do it during the week, putting it in our shopping cart or Bring it with you to church on Sunday and leave it in the cart in the narthex. And Dick and Eleanor Alcock will make sure it gets delivered to Fair Share Food Bank. You can see on the screen what they are looking for. So if you're able to bring any or all of those items as often as possible, that's greatly appreciated. Help us to help others. Thank you. We are thrilled to announce that our Sunday school is back in person. All children ages 4 to 12 are welcome to join us at 10 a.m. There will be a Bible lesson followed by fun activities and crafts. Please email me at youth.sinkcuthbird at gmail.com to complete the Sunday school registration form. I want to thank those of you who have been sending us prayer requests for people uh, in your life, people you know who are uh, benefiting from the prayers of the people, uh, prayers from our prayer team. Uh, if you would like to ask for prayers for people, please either send an email to Lori or myself or go to our website and right on our front page, you can click on the prayer request form. It only takes a few seconds. You can fill it in. It will come to Lori and I, and we will make sure that um, those prayers get included. They can be prayers for people who are suffering or struggling, people who are sick people who are in hospital, but also uh, people who are trying to celebrate some wonderful aspects of their lives, whether it's anniversaries or birthdays or whatever it might be. So please send us those requests and we will make sure to include those uh, prayers in our weekly prayers and in our ongoing prayers. God bless all of you. I want to say thank you to all of you who have continued to invest in the uh, mission work and ministry work that we do in our community through St. Cuthbert's. 
we appreciate the fact that you've been able to continue donations. In some cases, some of you have been able to increase those donations, and we really appreciate that. You can still uh, make donations by uh, mailing checks. You can use e-transfers by sending those to the uh, parish uh, email account. You can go through our website and click on the donate button and make donations there. If you are uh, not on PAG, we would love it if you could join that pre-authorized giving. Uh, just let Lori know and she will help you set that up. Uh, it certainly helps us and it helps you too so that you can budget uh, donations that you make to the church. Um, if you uh, are already making those donations and you're able to find a way to increase them, we really appreciate that because the, uh, the ministry continues moving forward. And uh, for some folks, this pandemic has been a tough time. And for those people, uh, it's been harder for them to continue making the contributions that they normally make to our ministry. So if you're able to increase those donations in any way, that would be a wonderful opportunity uh, for you to be able to make an even greater impact than you already are making. So thanks very much to all of you. Please stand. Let us join together in singing our opening hymn this morning, The, F the Glory of These Forty Days.
morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Cuthbert's this morning. Whether you're here or whether you are somewhere else at home, welcome to this first Sunday of Lent. Let us begin our worship in prayer. Well, I'll say bless you first. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us continue praying together, Almighty God. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together our Kyrie. pray our calling prayer for this first Sunday of Lent and let us pray saying these words together Almighty God whose son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are but did not sin give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your spirit that as you know our weakness so we may know your power to save through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and I'm going to ask the children and youth to come forward, and we'll say a prayer before we continue with our service. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we are all your children, but we pray especially today for our young people, that they will hear your voice, be guided by it, and be comforted, and know they are loved. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us take some moments to meditate, take time to center ourselves, prepare ourselves to hear God's word spoken and explained. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam. Who is a type of the one who was to come? But the free gift is not like the trespass. 
For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the, man, of the one man. Jesus Christ abounded for the, for the many, and the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, And suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Lord, King of eternal glory. Dear God, may we hear your word and live it in all that we do as we walk in the ways of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. reading from Matthew today turns on a question of identity. Did Jesus really know who he was and what he was expected to do, what he, how he was expected to behave? While in the wilderness fasting and praying, Jesus wrestled with the bedeviling questions of identity, of what it meant to be the beloved son of God. In the last verse of Matthew chapter 3, following Jesus' baptism, we heard God's voice from heaven proclaim, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Today's reading starts with Jesus being led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and there the devil began to work on him. Now, the clever tempter didn't question whether or not Jesus was the Son of God. That's not what, if you are the Son of God, actually means in this text. 
You see, we lose some things in translation when we try to go from different languages like Greek to English and then into English we can comprehend. So the Greek really should be translated more like, if you are the son of God, and I know that you are. So perhaps when we're reading these passages, maybe we should rewrite them and say to ourselves, since you are the son of God, we'd be closer to the original meaning. If we do that, and we think about what the devil said, the devil tried to get him to sort of take an easy way to call attention to his message. Since you are the son of God, he said, why don't you throw yourself off the temple? After all, God won't let you die, and people will all know who you are, and they will listen to you. Finally, he put aside pretense and said plainly what he really wanted from Jesus. Worship me, and I will let you rule the world. Of all these temptations, had almost, almost a rightness about them that was supposed to make them tempting to Jesus. I mean, turning stones into bread can feed a hungry world, for instance. When you throw yourself off the temple and the angel catches you, everybody will know you're the son of God. And then they will really listen to you and obey you. Rule the world, and then you can legislate morality, create peace and justice, usher in the kingdom of heaven. But these temptations also had an air of desperation about them. I mean, the devil really did try to get Jesus to use his powers to satisfy his own needs. He was trying, it seemed, to take advantage of what he thought was a psychological vulnerability that Jesus was experiencing, taking advantage of the fact he'd been in the wilderness for 40 days. He hadn't been eating. He was famished. The de devil seemed to think that Jesus could be taken advantage of, could be tricked. He acted as though Jesus was thinking, okay, I'm the son of God, but what do I do now? My father expects a lot from me, and I'm not totally sure about what it is I'm supposed to do. While Jesus was fasting and praying and thinking in the wilderness, the devil came to him and offered Jesus some suggestions. But Jesus responded in a way the devil either didn't expect or was hoping he wouldn't, because Jesus responded by saying, basically, I know who I am. I know what I am here for. I am the Son of God, and the Son of God doesn't panic, lose heart, or fold to some temptations, because the Son of God trusts in the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to lead him to a clear awareness of who he was and what it was he was called to do. Lent is a time for us to, to pray and fast and think about questions of identity and mission of who we are and what it is we are called to do. Now, today is the first Sunday of Lent. It also happens to be the day that we are going to have our vestry meeting, our annual meeting for our congregation. And we meet today not only to remind ourselves and reflect on what we've done together as disciples in the past year, we are to meet to share with each other who we are and what we hear God calling us to do here and now to fulfill our mission of co-creating the kingdom. Just as the Holy Spirit from, uh, came upon Jesus at his baptism, the Spirit also comes upon us to work in us. And just as the voice from heaven claimed Jesus as God's beloved Son, at our baptism, words are spoken that make it clear that we too are claimed and loved by God. And just as the Spirit led Jesus into and through the wilderness, we too have been led into a time of prayer and fasting and discerning what it is that God wants us to do. Not just as individuals, but as a collective, as a congregation. And it is important for us to take time to look at our lives. I mean, we should do this always, but Lent is a great time for us to do this, to be intentional about this about this reflecting and discerning. 
we really should be reflecting on the gifts that God has given us, the abilities that God has blessed us with, and the opportunities and relationships God has laid before us. And then we can ask ourselves, am I, are we, using these things for ourselves or for our own purposes? Or are we using these gifts to reach out and serve the world in God's name and with God's love? As a congregation, are we anxious about our future? Anxious enough to attempt maybe even some desperate measures to make the world notice us again or believe we are relevant? As a Christian people, in an increasingly secular nation and world, are we so concerned about our survival that we just don't respond to God's call to us to love our neighbors? Or are we sufficiently confident in our identity as children of God, trusting enough in God's love and guidance to step out into God's future full of energy and enthusiasm for whatever mission and ministry God has in store for us? We don't have a really long history as a church here at St. Cuthbert's, but it's, we've been here around for a while. And one of our early ministers, certainly in this location for our church, was a man named John Rye. And among the other many things that John was no, well known for, he was known for his mission work that he did in Africa and in Asia. And we often think of Christian mission work as doing God's work somewhere afar, in some foreign country, some other continent. But we don't need to travel afar to hear God's call to mission and to answer that call. At our baptism or in any other way that we have begun our journey of discipleship, we are all called to do God's mission wherever we are. That makes us all missionaries, sent forth from this place on a mission of love to respond to God's call to reach out with love to those around us. We are to do that with whoever God sends our way. We here at St. Cuthbert's are guided by our mission action plan. We call it our map that we have created in consultation with the Holy Spirit, with each other, and with our neighbors. And we're going to spend time in our vestry meeting today reflecting back on how we went through that process and how we began to live it out. And we're also going to spend time talking about what we plan to do in the coming year or two on this journey together through what feels like our wilderness. And we're going to continue to do things that are familiar to us, but we're also going to be doing things that are brand new to us. Or even if they, they look like things that we've done before, we're going to do them with new means and new ways. And like Jesus, we too will be guided and supported by the Holy Spirit as we walk this journey together. And hopefully, we won't succumb to the temptation to give up when the way is hard, or not exactly as we envision it, or not the way we've always done it. Instead, hopefully, we will walk arm in arm together in the love of Christ and live out our call to mission with joy and energy and passion and a true sense of purpose. So I invite all of you, whether you're here or somewhere else right now, I invite you all with the love of Christ in your hearts. If you're here, please come and join me for our meeting after worship, but definitely join together with us on our missional journey together. This week I was reading a lot of things about mission, about God's voice, about us discerning our call, and I came across this prayer, and I wanted to share with you, because I think it's a prayer that can give us some fuel, some energy, some food for our journey. So let us pray. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. We pray this through the one who you sent into the world, who knew who he was, who knew what he was here for, 
and who guides us in our mission, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. We are going to continue our worship by declaring our faith using the affirmation of faith that you'll see on the screen. And so let us now affirm our faith as we say these words together. We believe in God, who is love and who has given the earth to all people. We believe in Jesus Christ, who came to heal us and to free us from all forms of oppression. We believe in the Spirit of God, who works in and through all who are turned towards the truth. We believe in the community of faith, which is called to be at the service of all people. We believe in God's power to transform and transfigure, fulfilling the promise of a new heaven and a new earth, where justice and peace will flourish, Amen. prayers for those of us who are present for those whom we know those in our community and those around the world you speak God you always speak if we will but listen all we need to do is pause and turn our attention to the song singing from the heavens and whispering in the wind to the flight of the dove and the touch of its wings on our heads to the giggling of the water and the mark it leaves in our hearts by your incarnation and your birth in poverty, by your baptism, your fasting, and your trials in the desert. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. 
by your by your agony in the garden, by your cross and passion, by your death and burial, by your resurrection and ascension, and by the gift of your Holy Spirit. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. In times of trouble and in times of well-being, at the hour we die and on the day of your glory, O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. Deliver us from war and violence, and today we pray especially for those engaged in Ukraine. We pray from hardness of heart and from contempt of your love and your promises. O Lord, hear our prayer. Enlighten our lives with your word, that in it we may find our way and our hope. O Lord, hear our prayer. Assist your people in every land, and today we pray especially for those in Turkey and in Syria who are still suffering the aftermath of their earthquake. We ask, God, that you will govern us all in peace and justice and defend everyone from the enemies of life. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering or struggling in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially those made known to us. Claire, Lauren, Nika, Lale, Anne, Fata, Sean, Anna, June, Sarah, Michael, Diane, Peter, Wendy, Ryan, Barb, Maureen, Amanda, Raymond, Mary, Marilyn, David, Marjorie, Darcy, Peg, Milton, Jordan, Lorraine, Joan, Jim, Barb, Stuart, and we give... We pray also today for the Watson family and the Bryan family. And dear God, we give thanks for your loving care of Alex today. And we also pray for those known to you only at home. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are dying and for those who mourn the death of those they love, we pray especially today for Anne. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy. O Lord God, may the light and hope of your Son's incarnation reassure our hearts that you are among us, that you hear our prayer, and that you will be with us always, even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus, who walks in the wilderness all our days. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes all of us as sinners and invites us all to this table. Let us now confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The infinite grace of God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of Lord be always with you. Peace to all of you here. Peace to people. Peace up there. Peace at home. Peace, everyone. As we're 
bring our gifts forward to prepare the altar for our Eucharistic feast. We will also be bringing forward the uh, offering plate. And if you didn't have an opportunity to put something into the plate when you came in, you can do so now if you would like. And as we do all of this, we're going to sing our hymn, Now Let Us All With One Accord. Let's pray together our prayer over the gifts. God, our refuge and our strength, receive all we offer you this day, and through the death and resurrection of your Son, transform us into his likeness. We ask this in his name. Amen. This table is not for the righteous, but of the poor in spirit. It is made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time or ever before, you who have tried to follow and all of us who have failed at times in our own way. Jesus invites everyone all of God's children to this table to receive the sacrament of love poured out in this Eucharistic feast with no exceptions. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. 
therefore with angels and archangels and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray as we sing these words together. <laughs> break this bread, communion in Christ's body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the family of God.
Thanks be to God. receive you cosmic Christ we welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you with the saints we worship you with the angels we adore you with your whole church we proclaim your reign fill us with the awareness that we are all one in you amen everyone is welcome to receive communion this morning please just come up the center aisle following the people ahead of you please sanitize your hands on your way forward and gather along the rail you'll then be offered the bread and the wine you can receive one or both once you've received the elements you wish to receive please return via the side aisles and again i encourage you to sanitize your hands
And let us conclude our Eucharistic feast by praying this prayer together. Faithful God, in this holy bread, you increase our faith and hope and love. Lead us in the path of Christ, who is your word of life. We ask this in his name. Amen. Our journey in life shine with a star's delight. May our days and our years weave together a wondrous tapestry. May our unfolding story dance with the grace of every blessing. Always and ever may we rest in God. Always and ever may God rest in us. Amen. Please be seated for just a couple of announcements. First of all, immediately following our worship, please come to the hall and join us. We Every ten, uh, every Sunday at 10 o'clock, while we are worshiping in here, there is a, a Mandarin English service congregation worshiping in the parish hall. We're all part of the same church congregation together. These are people who are learning the worship. They are learning how to bridge between Mandarin and English at the same time. But we are all brothers and sisters in our community here at St. Cuthbert's. I'm telling you this because their service has just concluded and we will be joining them in the parish hall now for our, our time together, some hospitality time. There's lots to eat, lots to drink. Please come and join us. And then please stay for our vestry meeting following that. We are going to try to get it underway at 11.45 a.m. so that we'll be able to conclude before 1 o'clock. See that? <laughs> okay, I'll pray. Please, Jesus, help us finish by 11. Okay. March the 19th, uh, Bishop Susan will be here to visit with us. We will only be having one service that day. Um, all of us, no matter which congregation we're used to being part of, will be here at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a very special service with a range of different um, uh, worship and language. And then immediately following, I'm sorry, I should say, and the bishop will be preaching that day and she'll be celebrating the Eucharist for us as well. And then following that, we'll be in the hall for a wonderful lunch. Again, it's going to be a, a multi-ethnic, uh, multicultural lunch. So, so far, we have Canadian food, Chinese food, uh, German food, Persian food, and Caribbean food. If you have an ethnic relationship with any other group that I didn't just name and you want to contribute your food, please let me know and we will add it. It's going to be basically a potluck. I say that, but there are some people who have put their hand up to bring the food. I'm just telling you, though, that we are going to have quite a variety of ethnically uh, centered foods. So please let me know if you want to contribute to that in any way. I, we are this close to being able to pay off our brand new dishwasher. If you haven't had a chance to make a donation and you would like to, there are envelopes in the narthex just for that purpose. Uh, again, we are close. So if you're able to make a donation, please do. It's something we need to have, not only for our regular events, but for some of our user groups, for them to be able to function, we have to have a functioning dishwasher. So if you can help us out, please do. Did I tell you, we're this close. So yes, please. Starting this Wednesday, we start our book study. Our book study is going to be running for six weeks. It's all virtual. So if you would like to join us, please let me know. I'll make sure that either Lori or I will send you the Zoom link so you can join us. If you need help getting the book, let me know. It's available in every format, whether it's electronic or audio or printed, hardcover, and 
uh, uh, paperback. So please let me know if you want to be part of that. It's uh, If you can't come every week, don't let that keep you from coming. Like if you think, well, I'm going to have to miss a week, don't worry about that. Uh, I will tell you that not only is it a fabulous book by a fabulous author, but we have a great group of people who regularly meet to talk about these books. And I think you'll find that every discussion we have will be interesting. Is there anything I missed? Say again? Oh, the title of the book. Uh, it's a long one, <laughs> and I keep forgetting, but it has to do with wisdom. <laughs> and it's a very wise book by Krista Tippett. I just always forget. It's, a l it's one of those titles. That anyway, I will tell you this, that uh, it's an interesting book in many ways because Krista doesn't just write her own stuff. She interviews some really wise people throughout this book, which then contributes to the wisdom that we take in. But Krista is a, is a divinity-trained um, uh, educator, consultant, uh, uh, therapist. Uh, she's just one of those people who's very brilliant and has done many things, but she's also a very uh, uh, devout Christian and Anglican, if that's okay. So please stand. We're going to go out into the world, or at least into the hall, I hope. But before we do that, let us sing our closing hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. Let us bless the Lord. <laughs>